Do you have a labral tear in your hip? If you've been diagnosed with a labral tear in your hip, or you've been looking on the internet and you think you might have a labral tear in your hip, then this video is for you. I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about what exactly hip labral tears are, what causes them, how to know if you have one, and what treatment options are available. Will you need surgery for it, or can you take care of it with just doing exercises and physical therapy? Those are the topics that I'm going to cover in this video. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you get notified of our future videos. So, First of all, what exactly is the hip labrum, and what's a hip labral tear? Well, the hip labrum lines the hip socket. Your hip socket, or your hip joint, is basically like a ball and socket joint. Your hip joint is not out here like a lot of people think. It's actually kind of in your groin there. And the hip socket, or the acetabulum as it's called, kind of faces in an outward position like that. It's a little cup that faces forwards and outwards, and the, hip, the ball of the hip sits right in the groin there. Then you have these two little bumps on the outside part of your hips that people normally think of as their hip joints, or at least a lot of people do. And those are called the greater trochanters, but those have nothing to do with the actual joint. The joint is a ball and socket joint in the hip. Now, what's the labrum? It lines the outside part of that acetabulum or the hip socket. So it helps hold the ball in the socket a little bit more securely. Now, if you've seen my other video about shoulder labral tears, the hip socket is a little bit deeper. It's a little bit more stable than the shoulder socket, but you can still get injuries to the hip labrum as well. So what exactly are the symptoms of a hip labral tear? Well, much like the shoulder, one common feeling is instability. You may just feel like if you're on one leg or you're running or walking, the, the, the hip just doesn't feel stable. It feels like it could go out on you. That's one symptom, but a pinching in the hip, particularly like if you're in a bent position that way with your hips bent more than 90 degrees, that can be a symptom of a labral tear as well. You may feel like a grinding sensation or a popping sensation, like you feel like your hips may be popping out a joint. And those are other sensations. And of course, pain. Pain in the groin or pain in the buttock are the most common places where people feel labral tear symptoms. So how do you know if you have one? Well, you can do a lot of clinical tests that give you a pretty good diagnosis. You can do a lot of tests to tell if it's a joint problem or more of an outside of the hip problem. I'd say if you're feeling your pain out here, you almost definitely don't have a labral tear, or at least that labral tear isn't the cause of your pain. But if you're having groin pain or buttock pain, it is possible that you have a labral tear. I would suggest seeing a doctor or a physical therapist to get that checked out. That along with an MRI can help diagnose a labral tear. But truly, you don't really need an MRI until you're ready to sign up for surgery. That an MRI does absolutely nothing to affect the conservative treatment you'll get, whether that be medications or, in some cases, cortisone injections in your hip or just stretching and exercise and physical therapy. Uh, an MRI isn't going to tell you anything about how to do those treatments any better. So it's really just a waste of money unless you're, you've tried those things already, they're not working, and you're ready to sign up for a surgery and say, okay, do I definitely have one and is it worth doing surgery on? If you're not to that point yet, save your money, save your time, try some of these tips in this video or see a physical therapist and see if that can help you out first. So what are the treatment options for a labral tear if you've confirmed that you do in fact have one? Well, there is the surgical treatment option and that's typically done arthroscopically. It takes usually four to six months to recover and get back to activity, depending on what activities it is that you wanna get back to after a surgery. And that typically does require a lot of post-operative physical therapy as well. So if you're not to that point yet, if you're looking for conservative options, physical therapy along with, you know, sometimes cortisone injections actually are helpful to decrease the inflammation in the labrum because the labrum doesn't naturally heal by itself. Now, what does the physical therapy treatment for a labrum look like? Well, there basically are things that you want to do to address the causes of it. And so the causes of the labral tear, there are a couple different ways that it can be injured. It can be injured through a traumatic injury. It can be injured through an overuse, just doing repetitive activities over and over and over. 
it can be injured through just a congenital malformation of the hip. Either your hip socket is too shallow, there, that the labrum has to do more work to hold the ball in the socket because the socket's too shallow, or that it's too deep, that there's an overhang and the ball's too far in the socket, and so you end up pinching the labrum between the ball and the socket. And then there's just degeneration over time, that if you have osteoarthritis in your hip and you've had some wear wearing down of the cartilage in your hip, that uh, rougher joint surface can also wear down the labrum over time. Now, the, the traumatic injuries that can cause a labral tear are a hip dislocation or a car accident, something like that, where you've got a high level of force to your hip in a short period of time. The overuse injuries to a labor are more repetitive activities. For example, distance running, where you're doing the same movement pattern over and over and over and over again, miles and miles on end, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Other things that involve a lot of twisting, for example, golfers who, you know, they play 18 holes, they take several shots per hole, they do that probably some people three, four, five days a week if you're a really avid golfer, and that repetitive twisting while you're weight-bearing can injure the labrum if your mechanics aren't that great. And so working with a pro or working with a physical therapist who understands golf swing mechanics are something that can help if you do that repetitive type of activity. Likewise, improving your running technique or running form can help you to avoid a labral tear um, if you are a distance runner and you're running lots and lots and lots of mileage. And if either of those applies to you, we'd be happy to help you out here at More for Life. Now, if you're looking for some tips that you can use on your own to help prevent a labral tear or treat a labral tear, we need to look at some of the other biomechanical causes of a labral tear. So let's go back to that case where you have a structural uh, large socket, a deep socket that overhangs. Sometimes that's referred to as a pincer type impingement where the, there's a pincer or an extra overhang on the hip socket and it comes down and it kind of pinches on the labrum. Well, if your pelvis is tilted more forwards like that or tilted more forwards like that, it tips the socket down into the ball and it makes it more likely that you can pinch that labrum. So standing in a position where you don't have too much forward pelvic tilt like that, where you're neutral or even trying to tilt backwards a little bit, can give you a little bit more space in the hip joint, in the hip socket. Now, what about the muscles around the hip socket? If you've got really tight hip flexors, it can pull you into a position like that. Likewise, if you have really tight hip flexors and really tight hamstrings, tight muscles on both sides of the joint, well, that creates compression. It pulls the ball more into the socket, and it creates more compression as you move where that socket is being pulled, that ball is being pulled more into the socket and more onto the labrum, and it can cause more you know, wear and tear on the labrum over time. So improving flexibility in your hip flexors as well as your hamstrings are things that can be helpful for rehabbing a labral tear or preventing a labral tear from coming on in the first place. And I've got separate videos that I can link you to for both hip flexor stretches, where you stretch your hips kind of in that direction, and hamstring stretches where you do kind of more like that. And again, refer to those other videos for a little bit more detail on how to do those things. Now, what about the strength around the hip? Well, it's important to be able to maintain the ball centered in the socket as you move your leg forward and backwards and out to the side and all the various degrees of motion that a ball and socket joint allows the hip to move. Now in the shoulder, when you move your shoulder in lots of different directions, you have a rotator cuff that kind of helps hold the ball in the socket. And you don't have a rotator cuff of the hip per se, but the glute muscles, the deep rotators in the hip and the glute muscles themselves actually do kind of function to pull the ball back in the socket and from keeping it from getting too far forward in the socket so that you don't pinch the labrum or other things as you're moving around. And so what are good strengthening exercises for the glutes and the hip rotators? Well, the most common one that you see in physical therapy is called the clam or the clam shell, where you lay on your side and you kind of move your leg in and out like that. It's a very, very common exercise. It's actually a pretty decent exercise. It's a low level force exercise, um, but it's actually a pretty decent exercise. But a lot of people use the incorrect technique on it. And when you don't use the correct technique, you may as well skip it altogether because you're not going to get the benefits from it that you really need to do. So I'll refer you to another video for that as well, 
how to do the clamshell exercise for weak, weak hip muscles correctly. And it will uh, help you learn how to strengthen the hip rotator muscles, the rotator cuff of the hip, so that it keeps the ball centered in the socket. The other thing that's really important is that as you're walking or as you're running particularly, you need to be able to have good stability and balance on one leg. That uses primarily the hip abductor muscles um, that keep you from basically tipping over like that, but also to some extent the hip rotator muscles and the glute muscles as well. So um, standing on one leg, if you're running or if you're walking, if you can't maintain balance when you're just standing still, if every time you take a step, your leg's kind of going out to the side like that, eventually you're going to pinch things. You're going to get compression on the inside part of the hip, and it's going to cause some sort of damage, whether it be just wear and tear on the hip joint that can lead to osteoarthritis, whether it's a labral tear, or whether it's just some inflammation that causes you some hip pain. So balancing on one leg is another great exercise to strengthen your hip muscles and really to progress to more advanced exercises, for example, like doing mini squats on one leg. If you can't stand, you probably can't squat either. So that's a good place to start. So hopefully you found these tips helpful. These are just really exercises. You know, every person is structured a little bit different. As you can tell, there are many different causes of labral tears and your cause may not be the same as your neighbors down the street who had a labral tear. So what worked for them may not necessarily work for you and vice versa. It's really best to get an individualized evaluation and find out what the things that are contributing to your labral tear are so that you can help address them and hopefully help avoid surgery. Now, if you need some more help after trying the tips in this video and you happen to be in St. Louis, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help you figure out what's causing your labral Right, labral tear and get you back to activity as quickly as possible. And if you're outside of St. Louis, but you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you turn on notifications and you get notified every time that we post a new video. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great day.